Well, good morning, everybody. I know people are going to begin to trickle in here slowly but surely, but wanted to kick us off and uh, introduce everybody. This is a Genesis admin training on building flows with schedule checks, um, a great presentation and demonstration put together by our own Richard Dixon. Um, so look forward to that. And then on top of that, we have a couple other webinars coming up here throughout the rest of September. On the 22nd, we will go over key considerations for a healthy contact center, something that's a, a very important topic to me. So you'll see me there as well. And on 929, best practices for using Genesis surveys. So we're looking forward to having a full turnout for both of those. If you're interested in either one, please reach out and let us know. We'll get you a sign up. We'll get started here shortly once everyone trickles in and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. All right. Well, it looks like our, our participation and participants coming in has come to a, a stop and it's slowly going up. So we'll start. Um, of course, this webinar is recorded. So if at any point in time you come in throughout, uh, please let us know. We'll get you a copy of it. Um, so going over today's agenda, we'll, we'll, couple, <clears throat> we'll cover a couple topics, one of which is who is in Flow CX at a very high level. And then, of course, once we get into the uh, meat and potatoes of the webinar, we'll talk about building flows with schedule checks on the Genesis platform, followed up by a question and answer session, and of course, information on how to contact us. So let's start on who is Inflow CX. Well, Inflow is uh, a partner in the space that is an innovative provider for strategic advisory and deployment, along with managed services for a multitude of platforms, um, ranging from contact centers, unified communications, and of course, customer experience. Um, our expertise spans, like I mentioned, across a couple places, CX and UCAS, CCAS, along with many others uh, that people may not recognize, AI, automation, outsourcing, um, and analytics, uh, amongst many others to name. We provide a vendor-neutral approach to the technology evaluation, which is really important when looking at the large space of providers that are out there. Um, we've done a multitude of CCAS installs along with uh, contact center consulting engagements. So we're very experienced in a multitude of platforms and products and finding what the best fit is for you and your organization. We've also done over a thousand UC communications projects. So your phone systems, either that's ripping and replacing, supporting, et cetera. Um, some really important accolades that I love to, to touch on. Um, because we're so uh, involved within this space, we've been honored and recognized on a few few platforms. Five Nine as Sales Partner of the Year and Certified Implementation Partner, Genesis as their Implementation Partner of the Year, which is a large standout one for us. We're very proud of that. We've also got nice CX on the uh, contact center space, but we're also certified on the UC side for Zoom and Ring Central as an Implementation Partner and um, <clears throat> Selling Partner as well. G2 speaks highly for us. Um, that's where businesses go to review other businesses from their experiences. Please feel free to check us out on G2. You'll see a lot of reviews from other business owners themselves who've gone through similar transformations like you. So on our next slide here, we'll touch on a few things as well. Just a, a quick slide on our customers. Um, this just goes to show the vast space that we work within. We don't work within just one vertical, we work within them all. So you'll see anything from tech and retail to real estate and healthcare, along with finance and insurance. And there's many others that go um, from top to bottom on the verticals. So no one is too large or too small to work with. We're always happy to work and help you with anything you have. On our next slide here, we'll talk a little bit about our tech partners, just to give you an idea or a quick sampling of what we get ourselves into. For the contact center, we partner heavily with Genesis 5.9 and Nice and Contact. We also work with the likes of UJet, TalkTest, and Avaya. And for UCAS, for your phone system, we heavily work with RingCentral and Zoom, but we're also capable of working with many others, including Teams, 8x8, and others. With the CX ecosystem, um, <clears throat> with the CX ecosystem there's many paths you can go and many different avenues in which we can explore for you. But as you can see here, there's quite a healthy offering of different companies who specialize in a multitude of different areas. Um, anything from workforce management to AI and agent assist, along with automation, knowledge management, and of course, BPO as well. So moving on to our next slide here, as we begin to transition into our Genesis and admin training, I'll pass it over to Richard Dixon, who will go over building flows with schedule checks. Of course, as a reminder to everybody, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat below, or there's a question and answer session as well that you can ask questions there as well. Thank you very much. And Richard, now you.
All right, I'm gonna drag this on over. Hopefully everybody will be able to see it here in a second. This is kind of picking up where we left off last uh, webinar, where we had built out a flow. Instead of using a menu, we use choices, which are gonna operate the same way by pressing one, two, three, and then we have our hidden VIP selection there that we'd only say to an individual who's calling in, press four if you're you know, a VIP and only have them have that information so they can get to the queue that we wanted to get to. Now we can wind up in a situation where each one of these queues has a different schedule going on. There's two options with this. If it, everybody has the same schedule and it's the same hours, it'll be really easy. We could put a schedule check up at the top to be able to properly route calls where we want them during emergencies or off hours or a holiday. Uh, but if we have individuals, uh, individual queues that have individual hours, so they're not always the same. So let's say that engineering is a 24 hour situation while projects isn't and sales is only a certain few hours. We wanna have those variety in here. And to be able to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to case one here, which is going to be the choice that we have here, which is going to be press one for sales. We'll click the little triangle. It'll give us the option to be able to add different things in here. And in this case, we're going to dive through our menus here. And, uh, we'll get to that. There it is, evaluate schedule group in this case. So we're going to do schedule group because we're going to use it as a group as opposed to an individual schedule. And we're going to add one to each one of these. So in this case, we're going to have multiple options here from closed, open, holiday, and emergency. So depending on where we want it to go, we can either leave this at the bottom or drop it into each section here. So in this case, if everything else fails, we wanted to transfer to ACD in this case. So I'm going to leave no action here. So it's going to flow down to this point for closed. I'm going to add some extra stuff in here. I want to play in audio. which I can choose a prompt or choose a speech. In this case, I'm just going to have text to speech. I'm just going to put, we are closed. And then I could put something additional in there, such as the hours if I wanted to, or have a, a nice audio prompt in here. In this case, I'm keeping it very simple and just putting, we are closed. After we are closed, I'm going to have it do one more thing, which is going to be disconnect at this point. For holiday, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to add audio. But instead of going to close, I'm going to have it leave a voicemail option. That way, if somebody calls in during the holiday, they still need to be able to get a hold of us and, and leave an option here. So we're going to go to leave a voicemail. So we're going to do a transfer, transfer to voicemail. In this case, we're not going to have a user. We're going to have the queue that it's going to be going into. And in this case, the queue is going to be our R sales. For emergency, I'm going to have transfer directly to a voicemail. Again, it's going to be the queue. And then it's also going to be our sales prompt in here. And if everything else fails, it's still gonna to try to go to our queue. That's the way I'd prefer to have it set up. That way, no matter what, we're gonna get somewhere. Uh, when it gets to the queue, it has the option to go to voicemail if everything is shut down, but it gives us a few different choices here. Now, how is it gonna evaluate? We're gonna to have to go back up here and choose a scheduled group. So for this one, we're gonna do it eight to five which also has holidays already built into it. That way it will allow us to be able to automatically apply those things ahead of time. And, and I know we went over a previous webinar on how to build out a schedule. So if you go there and build out a schedule group and have all that information, whether you're open or you're closed or holiday or emergency, this will give you all those options available.
So in this case, I'm just putting a placeholder text to speech in there for audio prompt so that um, when that holiday comes up, we can have a recorded message in there specifically for that holiday. We'll go back over here. And in this case, on the open, I only want it to transfer to ACD. For all others, I'm gonna just have a disconnect. So for closed, I'm gonna go back in and go to disconnect. For holiday, we're gonna have a disconnect here. For this one, we're gonna have a disconnect. We still need to put a schedule in here. Each one will require a schedule. So in this case, we're gonna go into birth schedule group and apply that to this. That way we can have an individual schedule for each. That way, if there's a variety, we're not worried about a situation where only a certain group is going to be working during this time, while others would not. Now, if we were gonna have it just at overall, Instead of placing it where we are here, we'd place it right up at the very beginning. That way it will do a schedule check before we even see where somebody is going and then give those options depending on where we want them to go. So uh, we can have that schedule check ahead of time uh, before they make that choice, whether they're going to go to the VIP section or if they're going to go to the um, the engineering or sales department, we can have it look at that schedule group and go, nobody's available. We don't want to send it to these locations and make those adjustments. And for this last one, we're just going to put it a, a Labor Day, and they do want a time zone in here. We'll go for Chicago in that time frame. But each one of these, we do want to make sure that we also tell it what to do. So in this case, where we have case three, where we do have a schedule applied, we don't have anything in this situation where open, closed, or other Right now, everything will just continuously flow to uh, the, the queue. Now, if we want to have it that way um, and just kind of pre-plan for something later down the road, we could always put that schedule check in there and leave it there, uh, even if we are not using it in that case. It would be as simple as moving things around like you saw earlier, where we could drag the ACD over here, or we could do something very similar to what we had previously, where we put in where the open is always going to flow to ACD. Closed will play a closed message and then disconnect. Holiday will play a holiday message and then give the option for voicemail. And emergency is going to um, also disconnect in this situation, just play that emergency message. Is there any questions currently about how to apply that transfer to ACD in this situation? Does not look like it so far, but of course, as a reminder, I put it in the chat, but of course, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to use the chat feature or our Q&A feature at the bottom. You're good to continue, Richard. All right. Well, since uh, we have a little bit more time, I'm going to add a little bit more to this. So I know everybody gets spam calls and we have calls that we don't want and we want to be able to block calls. I'm going to also go over how to block calls in this situation uh, by adding it for a check in the system here to be able to find that out. So take me a minute to get all set up and then I will share out my screen here in a moment and show you how to do this. There's a couple steps that we have to do. We're going to have to first build out a data table. And I'm just getting that pulled up right now. There we are. We're going to create a new data table here. So this time we're going to call it uh, our, we'll just name it whatever we want. In this case, I'm just going to put it in R and uh, block calls. So division, I'm going to go for the division that we are currently in, which is webinar and training. Notes, they're optional. I like to put a note in there. That way people know. And for Russian key label, I like to put phone number. So now we're going to get down to the 
custom fields. It's going to be a, a boolean. And here we're going to put blocked. And we want to make true by default. Oh, we have reached our maximum. Let me go ahead and pull one of the data tables that we don't need really quick. We'll just use one that I've already created. You saw how we built it originally. In this case, to add a number here, all we would do is add the number. So in this case, we'll, we'll add a, a cell phone number. So we've added a saved. Save it. Oh, we, we don't need to save a second time. So if we go back into data tables, we'll go back into next. We'll go to block numbers and you'll see that both numbers are in here. They're both blocked as true. So then we'll go back over to, let me grab the right thing. We'll go back over to our flow here. And then we will add a collect data, sorry, a um, data table lookup. We'll need to select the data table that we're looking for, which is going to be that r.block calls or block numbers. For the Annie, I need to enter an expression in here. Let me copy this over really quick. So it's going to be write call dot any comma 10. And the reason why we need to put right call any dot 10 is it's going to look for 10 digits and look to the right. And those are going to be trying to match in this case. So in this situation, the first part, when I call in, if I am a block number, it's going to either find it, not find it or fail. So for the find, what we're going to do is we're going to add a audio file in here. And put a you are a block number in here. And then what we want it to do now is disconnect. That way it's no longer tying up a line in our situation. Uh, for not found, it's going to continue down and give them the option to go through our flow and to be able to then continue on and choose one, two, three, or four. And then it'll do that schedule check. So this is kind of building upon what we have already have here. So first thing that's going to happen is going to check that data table, which is going to be very easy to add numbers to just by going in as simply as what we saw earlier by clicking that data table, adding a plus mark and typing in the number that we want there. That way we can have this added as we move along when we find more numbers instead of blocking a singular number, which is possible, but a little bit more uh, complex in here. It is much easier to build out a data table of numbers that we want blocked and to be looking for them and tell it what to do in this situation. So if everything else fails or it is not found, it moves down to the collect data input. They press one, two, three, or four. From there, it'll move down and check the evaluate schedules. If the schedule applies and they are open, then it will continue on to that ACD. All right. Any further questions about building a, a block number in this situation? It does not look like it, although, of course, we'll give it a moment as people potentially have an opportunity to type out a question and, and put something in there for us. But uh, Richard, I appreciate it. Um, thanks for obviously covering the, the bulk of our webinar and, of course, touching on this little extra tidbit um, that we have as well. So uh, a lot of really great information um, for, of course, your Genesis system and uh, systems of the future. It looks like we do have a question. Um, Chrissy asks, can we touch on TTS? On the, on the, the TTS, I think that would be better for an, another, another time. That way we can have a little bit more information readily available for you on that. Okay. Uh, is there a particular portion of TTS that you're looking to cover? Well, let's see. Um, Chrissy, of course, if you have anything, um, you're more than welcome to give us another uh, question or type it in the chat. We can always see if there's an opportunity for us to touch on it real quick for you. Of course, if it's a little bit more in depth, 
um, it may be better for it. Um, she says, uh, they say not really, uh, more so of just using the TTS than anything with different languages as well, which is just as exciting. That sounds like it could be another webinar presentation since I know the TTS with Genesis is pretty complex. Is that correct? It Richard? is. It okay. is a, a bit more complex. I don't, I don't think it would be um, easy to go over it uh, in this situation, especially with the, the other languages. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, what we will do is we will work on getting uh, some information put together for that and see if we can also put together a, a webinar on that as well, something that could be of good use for, for many people. Um, so thank you for the questions, of course, really, really great information. Um, Richard, again, thank you so much for today's presentation. Um, really, really do appreciate you diving in depth on everything that is covered um, within today's presentation. Absolutely. We'll give it a, a quick minute here, just in case anyone does have any follow-up questions, questions on anything else moving forward. Um, we're more than happy to, to answer that for you <clears throat> before we go ahead and wrap up and present some contact information, how we can best get in touch with you. If, of course, you have any questions or comments on today's presentation, more than happy to give you a hand there. And just as some of you may have saw, as I was trying to add a, a, another data table, there is a limit to data tables in here. So it's, it's good to go back and clean up things that you no longer need as far as data tables. This is our, our sandbox environment. So there's a lot of testing that happens here. So things can fill up pretty rapidly. Uh, but in general, uh, there is a limit uh, of 50 currently in this situation. So be, be aware of that as you're building out data tables. Perfect. That's great to know. Well, thank you, Richard. And thank you, everybody, of course, for, for coming today. Um, of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out um, through a multi-channel approach. We've got, of course, our phone number here, 844-446-3569. And of course, contact at inflowcx.com. We'll be able to answer all your questions and comments. Of course, we have multiple resources and other videos, including other webinars we posted. You can find those on YouTube, of course, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and Twitter. We also have a podcast where we talk with a lot of industry leaders um, on their experiences with the platforms they use, and of course, their experiences with Inflow as well. So by all means, check those out. You can find those on LinkedIn and also Apple Podcasts as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you on many other webinars in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.